Okay, finally, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my system, but it's it, it's having giving me issues, and I'm trying to reflect just my document camera. <laughs> it's getting a little frustrating. I'm not sure what's wrong with the system. It's been doing that these last couple of weeks. I <clears throat> can't figure out why. Um, and sometimes it projects it backwards, like this is like a mirror reflection. <laughs> and so um, I don't know to you, it appears backwards, but a while ago it was for me when I see it, it was backwards. <laughs> I can't teach that way with it reading it um, backwards. So anyhow, so I'm going to do a, a recording for the section 10.2 in your workbooks for statistics called regression. And uh, this is also to help you on your quiz number three, which, which covers regression section 6.2. So <clears throat> when you take your quiz, it, those are the first couple of problems that are gonna be generated for you on the quiz. Be able to determine the whether regression and last analysis should be done. So the way we're gonna teach this <clears throat> is we're going to show you how to calculate R on your calculator we're going to input data into columns L1 and L2 from our data given in tables from our book. So we're going to do two problems. And, um, and we want to find the correlation coefficient. And there were some extra papers I emailed you so in your module. There's some extra handouts that I wanted you to print. Um, and so uh, because I think I'm going to take a look at your workbook. But if I remember correctly, your workbook doesn't really have uh, any examples, kind of like what happened with 8.1, there weren't any examples to set up the conjectures. Well, kind of the same thing. I didn't notice any problems with setting up the multiple regression, so we've got to pull some out of the book. And then also, it didn't have the table. I didn't see, there's a table we're going to need. Looks like this table here. This table one or I should say I, because that's J, I, J, critical values for the uh, this product moment. We've did this back on quiz number two. So Pearson product moment coefficient variable, PPMC. It says reject H sub zero, and this is proportion. That's the sigma, I mean, the, the Greek letter rho, the Greek letter rho. So proportion equals to zero if the absolute value of R is greater than the value given in the table. The values are for two-tailed tests 
And this, this DF, this DF stands for degrees of freedom, which is equal to N minus two. N is the number of data in your um, column. And so you want to count how many data values are in your, I, I should say, um, col yeah, columns. You want to count your columns. How many columns do you have? And that would be how many data. So you want to count your columns of data and then do N minus two, and then you would go down based on that number DF. And then the you'll see on your homework, it doesn't have it in your ebook problems, but you'll see in your in your computer online programs problems that they're going to assign an alpha level of either 0.05 or 0.01, so 500s or 100s, and then that's what what you'll use here. We would use this a statement here to see if it's uh, significant, and if it's significant, then um, we're going to perform multiple regression on it and find the regression equation, okay? And so uh, that's what this is about here. So if our absolute value of R is greater than the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient value from the table one, then if, if the statement is true, then we should um, do multiple regression and the value, the R value is significant which means that um, the no is rejected because of that's true. But if it's false, then we shouldn't, we have no business doing multiple regression if it's false. Now your calculator will always generate um, the variable numbers like um, A and it's uh, A plus BX is what they use. Kind of like if you take in college algebra, Y equals MX plus B slope and intercept. Well, multiple regression, they use A plus BX, Y prime equals A plus BX. So, um, um, and I can show you that here. This is another handout that I wanted you to print because these are the commands we're going to use. Um, because I think they've taken it out, but there was an error in the workbook where they had you use the wrong command. I think at one time they were having you use... Um, uh, I think they're having you press four instead, but it's actually eight that you need to press for this A plus BX. Cause I think four is AX plus B and it's, you want the A plus BX. So you want to press eight. Um, and then, uh, so the calculator will always give you um, these values A and B but you only write out the equation if it's significant, if the R is significant, and if it passes this test with this with these tables check, um, then then you go ahead and write out the equation, and then you can do a prediction. Then you can they'll give you a x data value to plug in and substitute. And you can do a prediction on that. Okay, so. So if it is significant, then you will write out the equation. You'll identify A and you'll identify B. And the computer will probably ask you to round to a certain place value. So just follow whatever place value they ask you to round to. Um, and, then, and then you'll continue by doing a prediction for whatever. The problem is always going to give you an X, but that doesn't mean you always need it because if it's not significant, you won't do multiple regression. And if you don't do multiple regression, you won't need to substitute X and find the Y prime value. So you only do it if it's significant. And of course you round to whatever place value they give you. So that's that's what this is on your quiz. Those are the first two problems you're gonna get on your quiz is the multiple regression. Now the computer generates two problems. So ideally, ideally what we would like to see, what the instructor would like to see is one of each, one where regression is done and one where it isn't. But the computer just randomly generates problems for the students. So you don't know if you're gonna get two where multiple regression should be done or two of multiple regression shouldn't be done or, or one of each. So you just don't know because the computer randomly gives that to you. Uh, so just keep that in mind, okay? All right, so remember this is your, your study guide. What you're required to do is you're required to decorate, I know there's not much room in the front, but you're required to decorate the back 
with a few sample problems or like like the commands, the, the steps for the commands for doing that on the calculator, you can jot those down because you are, you are taking a timed quiz. And so you do want to be organized. You just, I mean, yes, you can, if you think of it as open note, open book, open note, but it's a time. So you got to have it organized all in one sheet so that you're not wasting time trying to look for all your papers. So you want to organize that and think it out after you've done your homework and get ready for your quiz. <clears throat> okay. And that's required. If you don't do that, this is not bonus. This is required. <clears throat> so this is required. And if you don't do that, you're not demonstrating that you studied for the quiz and you will get a 10 point deduction off your quiz score. So this does get uploaded you know, before you start your quiz. And then there'll be a password in the system, you know, so I, you have to have your homeworks done with 60% or higher. Um, and so as long as those you when you type get it, you know, as long as you've got the homeworks done with 60% or higher, then you can actually, um, you know, um, uh, get into the quiz and take your quiz, right? Um, and then something similar will be set up for the final. In order to take your final, you have to have taken your quiz, but you don't have to get a 60% or higher on the quiz. I don't think that's that would be required, but you do have to take your quiz. So I'll maybe set up a minimum. You can't not take, like have a zero, not take the quiz and then um, take the final. So also will probably be a good idea is is if you did your co, like if you're in the co-requisite class, some of you are taking a standalone statistics and some of you are taking the co-rec. So you're in the co-rec because of your scores initially on a certain test. So you, the state says you can take statistics, but you have to be in a remediation state. You have to be studying um, certain basic topics and then we'll let you take statistics. So you, we require now a uh, test A for the co-rec class. So maybe a good uh, rec rec recommendation uh, requirement to take the final would be that you have to have that co-rec done, that test taken. And you've taken that co-rec test and then you have permission to take the final. Um, because then in the system, I can um, you know, check for that also, uh, that there's a grade for that in the system. So um, so I can give you further like emails on that. Um, but if you've already taken the the quiz and the and the core, there's no worries, no issues then if you plan on, on completing that. But that's to motivate you to make sure you follow through and you finish, right? The last day of withdrawal has passed. And so you you required if you stayed in the course, you were responsible for meeting the course deadlines. Okay, so that's to not have you just um, not not meet your course deadlines, right? So that's a motivation for that. Okay, so um, so let's talk about the regression then. So first, I'm going to go through um, what the workbook has. The workbook has some pages. Well, we'll take a look at them, and I might have a few comments to add. But then I also have a copy of the ebook. So I'm also going to highlight some pages from the ebook. And this is just another section where it does require a lot of reading. It's helpful. The more you read, the more you're familiar with your material. Um, so I'll do that, an ebook. And let's see. All right. So let me just see. So. So this first page, let me see if there's anything to highlight in the workbook here for that. So let's take a look at this. So this is on page 191, page 191 down here of your workbook. Let's see. So it says, in addition to hypothesis testing and confidence intervals, inferential statistics involves determining whether a relationship between two or more numerical or quantitative variables exists. Okay. And then I was thinking, um, let's see if I have that handy. I was, when I was reading that, I was thinking about, let's see, the course objectives. Let me see if I have that handy to show you where we're at. 
because it mentions inferential statistics. I thought I saw that here. I thought I had that out. Let me just look. You could be reading through the pages. <laughs> you could be through that while I look for that real quick. I know I have it handy somewhere. <clears throat> Disappointed because I don't see it. I thought I had it here earlier. So just read, just read through your pages. Let me look real quick. Pretty sure I had a copy of it earlier. Yeah, I saw it here earlier. Here it is. Yeah, because it mentions, you know, uh, in addition to hypothesis testing, confidence of inferential statistics involves determining whether relationship between two or more numerical or quantitative variables exists. So let's see. This is, of course, there's only eight course objectives. Um, so we're going to be doing a little bit of hypothesis testing towards the end. I have two problems from the handouts I asked you to print that we're going to be looking at. Um, solving linear regression and correlation problems. So we are going to be doing multiple regressions, what we call that. Um, we already did the confidence intervals recently. I thought I saw the word inferential on here. Do you see the word inferential? Theoretical, empirical. Okay, all right. But we'll be doing, we do, we're covering regression and then we'll be doing two problems at the end with hypothesis testing. Okay, just wanted to take a look at that. Okay. All right. So correlation, correlation is a statistical method used to determine whether a linear relationship between variables exists. So remember, remember back when we took quiz two? Remember, we had the scatter plots in chapter two, section four, and then we had that quiz where we had that handout where we were doing using the decision rule, remember, and we were using the, a, one of our tests for statistics, remember? We had to turn the diagnostics com computer key on, remember? And so, so we're, we're, for regression, they like to have you like consider the scatter plot and see if you see a relationship. Is there a positive relationship or is there a negative relationship? Uh, it's rare when you have like the rainbow, the curvature relationship, okay? Or just the dots points all over the place and there's no, in this case, multiple regression is a line of best, best fit and the points are close to the line. So that's what we're trying to look for. <clears throat> So you, again, you should you should read read through this. Then they talk about predictions can be made, and this is you know they always in your problems. Um, let me see if I can show you problems. They always ask you to predict, but that doesn't mean you're going to predict if the multiple regression is um, not significant. Then we even though they give you those values, we won't be able to compute that. So let's see if I can just show you. Some problems. From, I have copies of the ebook here. Just, I will print a copy of the ebook, and I'm going to go through that in a little bit too to go over the vocabulary. <clears throat> but if you just look at these problems, we're we're going to be doing 
Um, I think it was 23 and 27, I think, that I pulled out. Let me see. It's 23 and 27, yeah, that I pulled out that we're going to demonstrate. But you can see here that um, um, all these problems, they always, um, they always give you, um, uh, let's see, they always give you uh, like a, an X to plug in, right? So kind of like, like here, this is what I'm looking for. Find Y prime when X equals 60. Um, find Y prime when X equals four. They will always usually in your problems give you that. Find Y prime when X equals 1500. But, but you don't always, do follow through and do that if if R C like if R is not significant, then no regression should be done. But like in this case, R must have been significant. So then they plugged four into the formula, the equation, the equation. And when they plugged four into the equation, then they ended up getting so this must be the equation. This is the multiple regression equation. A plus or minus bx. So remember a plus bx. And it, these could be positive or negatives, but a plus or minus right, bx. And then they plugged in x, they plugged in four, and then they got this value out, okay? Um, and so, but you only do that if r is significant. So we have to show you how to do the table. And, um, and so that's kind of what your problems look like, okay? And so, so that's what they mean where you can do predictions when you find y prime when you let x equal a number. So you're finding these predictions here. Okay. So again, I'm gonna let you read through these. Um, and then they recommend, and they also recommend that you first do a scatter plot to see if you see a relationship, just to give you an idea. And then we follow through with the table just with the hypothesis idea and follow through with the table to see if it's significant. And then if it is, then we actually do multiple regression. So here they're going through and making a scatter plot. So you see this one looks like, like that's a relationship, like a positive relationship. So it looked like you would be able to have a multiple regression equation for something like that. Um, and so here it talks about Population correlation coefficient. Okay, that's the that's row proportion. Linear correlation coefficient. Okay, there's your there's your R. Okay, computed from the sample data measures the strength and the direction of a linear relationship between two quantitative variables. So they call it the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. So we, we saw that in 10.1 when we took the quiz, the correlation quiz after 2.4, which on quiz two, we had to use the decision rule. Uh, the range of the correlation coefficient is from negative one to one. There's a strong positive linear relationship when the R is close to one, and there's a strong negative relationship when it's close to negative one. There's no relationship when it's hovering about zero. Now you can see how it's highlighted here. You just don't know like what's the cutoff, right? So it, it depends on your, your table value when you do that, that little test with your table. And then you've seen this before from quiz two. So these are values of examples of R being 0.5, R being 0.9. Perfect one, see perfect one, it's like a, a line, see that? Perfect negative one, so positive slope, negative slope. This is negative 0.9 and negative 0.5. Oh, look at this <clears throat> formula, that's ferocious. Now your, um, your videos, that you watch your videos, it might show you how to do it by hand, but you're not required, we're not required to do it by hand. We, we use our calculator. So I'm gonna show you how to do the calculator, but I think your video shows you how to do it by hand. So you don't have to, I'm gonna show you how to do it by the calculator. I'm not gonna do that by hand. Now, when I was in school back in the day, in the early nineties, we had to do stuff like this by hand. We had to, it was very tedious. 
<clears throat> okay, so yeah, this is called computing the correlation coefficient. Looks like they're trying to do that by hand. We use the calculator for that, the commands for that. <clears throat> and then they talk about hypothesis testing. They're using proportion. So here in hypothesis testing, when the following is true. So the no hypothesis means that there's no correlation between the variables, where this alternative means that there is a significant correlation between the variables, okay? So no, no um, correlation and that there is a significant correlation, okay? <clears throat> and then they make use of a, of a T to have a formula for that, also degrees of freedom. And so, um, and like I said, we're, we're kind of using that idea too in our little table. That little table that I had has, um, remember, a value of T data values minus two, remember that? So we're kind of using that idea here, degrees of freedom and minus two. And we limit it to these two alphas. So kind of similar there. This is doing this by hand. Okay. And see they're using alpha level and R. Then they're using example 10 4. I don't know if they gave us, like I, if I were to do this on the table, I'd have to have the data. Let's see, do I have the data for 10-7? We can try that. I guess this would be your data, let's see. A, B, C, D, E, F, cars. Okay, so I guess if we were to do that, your data, we have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. N, N is six. Let's see, so we were to try that. Um, N is equal to six. Data values, which is um, company. Okay, so um, degrees of freedom is um, N minus two, six minus two, which is four. And so when we go down this, if we use this table, if we use this table, degrees of freedom is four. And then let's see the alpha. Point um, oh five. So four and 0 0.05, which is 0 0.811. So when alpha is 0 0.05 and degrees of freedom, it was four, it was 0.811. Okay, so then um, what you need is there's this other handout that I have. Let's see if I can find it. I have it on the table. Uh, things that I asked you to print out. Let's see. Where are my copies? I had I had I had these printouts. I'm not going to write on these because I'm going to save these for the two problems. But remember, I, you have those printouts I asked you to print, and it kind of, and this kind of looks like what's on your quiz, like number one and two on your quiz. So it asks you to identify R and alpha, and should regression be done? And so R, they told you was 0.982, and when you do this, you should compute the absolute value of R. And you want to find out the absolute value of R. You want to find out if the absolute value of R is that greater than 
the table I value is that greater. So, so R, so I'm getting that from here, that information. And here, we already did this part minus two. And so when we do that, R is, um, that's the value of R, it's gonna be positive 0.982, which is 0.982. So you're asking is 0.982 greater than this table value, 0 0.811. Is this true or false? This is true. This is like 98 cents. This is like 81 cents. So 98 cents is like greater than 81 cents. So this is true. So since it's true, then you should, the regression analysis should be done. If it had been false, then it shouldn't be done. But it's true because it's true, the regression analysis should be done. And they say it's because the variables have a significant relationship since h sub zero, which is the null hypothesis, they say that it's um, rejected. And it's it's rejected because it's rejected because um, the absolute value R was greater than that table I value because that was um, a true inequality. It was true. If it had been false, then you, if it had been false. <clears throat> Then, then you would not, you would not have accepted it or done regression on it. Okay, so so first they did they went ahead and did a little scatter plot, and in their little scatter plot, I thought they did a scatter plot. Didn't I see a picture of a scatter plot? Yeah, that was this one, right? So first they did a little scatter plot and it looked like it, it looked like there was a, a positive, sometimes it's positive, sometimes it's negative, but it looked like there was some kind of relationship going on. So they had a hunch that that's good. It looks like, it looks like it's possibly going to, you're going to be able to do a regression, but sometimes you just can't go with looks like you need a double, another test to double check. And the double test is this PPMC test and that near that really solidifies it and it was true so yes they would you would do regression for that okay so that's kind of what we're going to be doing in our two homework problems here okay okay let's see what else is on here and let me just see if i have i have let me see if i have anything highlighted or extra Okay, it's coming up. I'm making sure they didn't skip that. So let me see. Let me see. Possible, possible relationships between two variables. So there's a direct cause and effect relationship between the variables. X causes Y. So that's when the null hypothesis has been rejected for a specific value. Any of the following five possibilities can exist. 
there's this reverse cause and effect relationship between the variables. That means Y causes X. The relationship between the variables may be caused by a third variable. There may be a complexity of interrelationships among many variables. The relationship may be coincidental. <clears throat> so this is talking about the coincidental little paragraph there. <clears throat> okay, then we have these figures here, regression. If the value of the correlation coefficient is significant, the next step is to determine the equation of the regression line. That's true, which is the data's line of best fit. That's true. Mm -hmm. So I would highlight that. Yep. <clears throat> it's important. Best fit means that the sum of the squares of the vertical distance from each point to the line is at a minimum. Mm -hmm. So you, you want your points to get closer and closer to X. That's true. So that's a good representation. So I think, yeah, in your homework, there's a question that's kind of related to that. Those points, you want those points to be as close as possible. Yep. The sum of the squares of vertical distance from each point to the line is at a minimum. That's important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. So some notes I have here I'm referencing like a scatter plot should be drawn first. So we talked about that. Um, you want to look at R, not R squared. So that's important because on your calculator, R and R squared will pop up. So it's R that you're looking at. Um, when R is near zero, the linear relationship is, is really weak or non-existent. So no regression line should be found when R is not significant. But when R is near one or near negative one, then a strong linear relationship exists and the regression line should be defined. Yeah, and, and we just follow it up though with the table. So like, what was the R? What was the R over here when we did this? See, R was pretty close to one, see 0.98. And we also did the table. Sometimes, you know, when R is 0.6 or 0.5, that's why you gotta, back it up with the table just to make sure is it really significant and it depends on your two alpha levels but yeah when it's like 0 0.9 that's kind of a giveaway that that's or negative 0 0.9 that's a giveaway because it's real close to one but when it's like 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.5 you need something stronger you need this table in the alpha levels to back it up and that little test is the absolute value of r greater than that value in your table. So if it's true, then you do the regression. So you need a backup. Okay. Okay, there's that. Look, look at this when you do this by hand, look at that. So it's good that we get to use a calculator. And here's your, your regression line, your regression line equation. Y prime is equal to A plus BX. So that's important. I'm going to have that written down. Like in, on your little cheat sheet, like when you write that down, you should write that equation down. And also you should write this down. A is, um, I'm not sure, A is, 
Y prime, B is the slope of a line, yeah. Mm. I'm not sure A is Y prime. Mm. Y, it's like kind of like Y equals MX plus B. Y equals MX plus B. Yeah, okay, yeah, it's the, it's the Y, it, not the Y prime, it's the Y prime intercept, yeah, it's the intercept, like zero B, yeah. Okay, so it's the intercept, okay, so that's fine. So it's similar, it's similar to Y, it's similar to Y equals MX plus B. So you know M is your slope and you know B is your zero B, that's your Y intercept. So yeah, it's similar to that. So this is your intercept A and then this is your slope B, so it's similar to that. I have here that the sine of the correlation coefficient r and the sine of the slope of the regression line will always be the same. If r is positive, then b will be positive, for example. Okay, I'm going to write that down. I think that I I'm not sure how important it is if you know that, but that is uh, relationships. I guess I'll write that down. Maybe that would be something to check your work or signs, because sometimes you'll make sign errors. And I'm sure I got this probably from your um, ebook somewhere. And then I also just have a note to, to say also you want to um, find Y prime value for the specified X value only if your R, which is not R squared, but the R, which is the correlation coefficient is significant. So I think we I think we've covered that and said that before, but I'm just gonna make sure I write that down. <clears throat> Yeah, next page, they have these scary looking formulas. Oh my gosh, it's overwhelming if you do it by hand. But we're not gonna be doing this by hand, but you see how, they were, how they're how they trying to go, <coughs> teaching how to calculate that by hand, it's ferocious. Okay, did you finish writing that down already? Let's see. Yeah, okay. So let's see. So I'm not gonna write anything on the second page. And let's see, I'm looking at the next page. Thing 
going to this page. So I think that's the same problem that we were doing, right? With the, with the, um, with the when we did the regression on earlier. Okay, so let me let's go ahead and do this one and since we have it here. Let's see. Let's go. We would. Let's see. We would put these values like in L one and like in L two. Let's put those values in. So remember, you do. And edit. Oh, a stat. A stat, and then edit one. Edit. Enter. Okay, and then go to the top and clear. Top and clear. And then if you put these values in, sixty-three. 29, 20.8, 19.1, 13.4, 8.5. Then over here, 7, 3 .9, 2.1, 2.8, 1.4, 1.5. Okay, and then and then you're going to use your calculator commands. So uh, that's where that other handout I had you print those handouts. This, these are your calculator commands. So we enter data in L1, enter data in L2, and you brace, basically press stat and calculate. So stat, and then you tap to calculate, and then you basically want to press eight. And I know you can't see eight there, but eight, you can just press A, but eight is this um, uh, lean regression A plus BX. So that's why you want to press eight and then enter, right? So, and then you tell your data where, tell, calculate where your data is at. So you put your X data in L1. So that would be the second button in number one. And then you put your Y list in L2. So that's the second button and then number two, because that was L2. And you leave your frequency list um, vacant. Leave vacant. And actually, this is fine. Um, I know on this paper I have here Y sub one, but this can remain vacant. This can remain vacant. So at first I thought that my calculator wasn't figuring it, regression equation. So this can be um, left vacant. And that's because we already, we already did the diagnostics on, in the handouts I had you print, it was in case you ever, I guess, turn your calculator off. But remember we did this when we took our first, I mean, our quiz number two. Remember we had done this, press the second catalog. So I think that's on the zero. You would scroll down to diagnostics and press enter and then press enter to execute. And it says you only have to do this once. Diagnostic display mode will remain on until you perform a similar setup. To turn it off so so that's why we should be and we want to find r okay and and if it's significant see that's pretty close to one but also you would double check on the table but if it's significant you want a plus bx so you see a see the calculator gives you the a and then the b see that's b bx and then if then if you have to predict i'll tell you predict like here when X is 12 or like when X is 80. So the calculator always tells you to find Y prime, but that doesn't mean you're gonna do it all the time. You only do it if R is significant. And the way you 
check it is they they would like you to do a scatter pot and kind of see but then you follow through with that table i showed you that um, table i and then if it's significant then you go through and you write the equation out okay so 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 here we go to calculate and then hit enter and see how it gives you R. 0 0.981979897. And remember we had already we had already done the little um, the little test. Remember this is this is the same one we already did the little test where the six minus two, and then we looked it up for the alpha. So where do we do that? Remember we did that back here. That was the same problem, right? On the car rental companies, right? So we already did this, the R. And you see, you see how it's round, see if you round this and there's thousands. They didn't tell us what to round to, but um, I can only tell by working backwards. See how they have this? See that? So that's tens, hundreds, thousands. And then look at the neighbors. Is that five or more? Yep, that's a nine. So R is about 0 0.982. And yep, that's that's um, what, our, what our R is. And then the alpha was 0 0.05, remember? And we already did this test it was true, so regression should be done. So we should provide the equation. So those are the two things you should do is, um, I think I think on your connect, on your system, I think they tell you what R is already, um, but you know, when you take your final, um, when you take your final, I think you have to calculate your R. I don't think they give you the R on the final. I think what happens on the final is you have to find your R, but the thing is, what I don't like is um, when they made that problem up, they they um, didn't make you check, uh, the. they didn't give you an alpha level. They didn't have you do the alpha level, so you won't be able to do the check, but they want to see you demonstrate that, cor that the correlation, that the multiple regression can be done. They want the equation for that, but they really should have provided the alpha level to double check that. And I think that's one thing they were kind of sloppy on that question. They didn't, if I remember correctly on that. Um, so, but they want you to demonstrate that you know how to set up the multiple regression for that. Okay. So, so, um, so here's our R and we checked and it's significant. And so now here, here are your A values. So now let's see if I go into what's on the next page. This for the next page. Okay, so there's the next page. And this should match on your calculator, see? So the calculator says A has Y equals A plus BX. So A is 0.39632101539. You can see how they ran it to the nearest thousands. So on the computer, you round to whatever place value, tens, hundreds, thousands. Look at the number to the rise of five or more. No. 0.396. And then B is equal to 0 0.106. Tens, hundreds, thousands, look at the number to the right, 0.106. See that right there? That matches that. <clears throat> and so, so then you have the, that's your equation, see? Y, oh, this is, excuse me, Y prime. Y prime equals A plus BX. And it's really plus or minus BX. This, this, these could be positive or negative. A could be positive. It's really like, plus or minus, right? It could be, and this is also like plus or minus, it depends, but you can see these are positive. And there's your, there's your, there's your equation. It says, right, find the equation 
of the regression line. That's what that is, the equation of the regression line. Excuse me. And then um, I don't think it has you do a prediction, but if you were to do a prediction, it would tell you do a prediction, you know, for x equals something. Then you would just whatever x is, you would plug it in here, plug it in here, do this times whatever that number is, and then you would add that. And then that would give you a predicted value. <clears throat> so they didn't have you do a prediction on that. <clears throat> Assumptions for valid predictions, a sample is a random sample for any specific value of the independent variable x, the value of the dependent variable is being normally distributed about the regression line. The standard deviation of each of the dependent variables must be the same for each value of the independent variable. <clears throat> okay, I did have, I did have a comment here. I did, let me go back to this. I did have this comment here that says, when all points fall on the regression line, then the value of the correlation coefficient is negative one or one. <clears throat> okay. All right, so then that's, that's your workbook there. So really there's really, that's the only problem they have there. And then they really left out the table, right? The table, so they didn't have that. Okay, so now let me show you my, I made a copy of the ebook. Let me see what I'm gonna grab from the ebook. So I went through, cause there's some questions I think on your, there's a few questions. This is a copy of the ebook. So there are a few questions there. Let me see. So I have highlighted that in studying relationships between two variables, collect the data and then construct a scatter plot. So that's important. I'd like you to do that first. And then you also want to test the significance of the correlation coefficient. That's what we were doing. Okay, and then you have to comp yeah, compute R. And then this is important, when all points fall in the regression line, the value of the correlation coefficient is one or negative one. So I think we wrote that down on the other page, right? Let's see what else I highlighted from the ebook. Here I have this highlighted. The reason you need a line of best fit is that the values of y will be predicted from the values of x. Hence, the closer the points are to the line, the better the fit. I think there's a question in your homework related to that. And the prediction will be, okay. When r is positive, the line slopes upward and to the right. When r is negative, the line slopes downward, like you're walking downstairs from left to right. I think I had you write this earlier, right? The sign of the correlation coefficient, the sign, the slope of the regression line will always be positive. If R is positive, then B will be positive. If R is negative, then B will be negative. So that's how you can kind of check your equation, make sure you don't have a sign error. If R is not significant, then the best predicted value for the specific X value is the mean of the y value in the original data. Okay. <clears throat> okay, and then this is where your problems start. And then I'll let you kind of, I'm gonna leave this here if you wanna read through that. Look, one through nine. 
They have the answers to some of them. So the slope is B. The Y intercept is A. Okay, so we keep seeing this, right? Okay, and then I, I had you print, I had you print some sheets. And so this is um, R, R is significant, then you want to determine the, the equation of the regression line. Here's your equation, y prime is, I think that should be y prime. It looks like y sub one, but that's y prime is a plus b to the x. A is the y, uh, y intercept, the y prime intercept, b is the slope. Then you would make a prediction using the given value of x. And then this is to find out if r is significant, we use the table, that table i, and, and the computer will assign you one of these two alpha levels. Best fit means the sum of the squares of the vertical distance from each point to the line is at a minimum. So you want the points as close as possible to the line. Okay, and then Okay, then I have this sheet here, which is like from your connect math that talks about how it uses table I here. So you would perform multiple regression when the correlation coefficient R is, is significant and you want to test the vast value R is greater than the value from the table. Okay. And you have to do your degrees of freedom, yeah. Okay. And so they're they're walking you they're walking you through a problem here. So here you would um, put the data in your computer here. So you have um, stat edit. And you come up and you clear your data. And then you want to put your data. So you would put this data in L1, this data in L2. So it's water and carbs. So go ahead and start typing in your data. And it says that there are many interesting relationships among the various nutrients found in fruits and vegetables. Listed below are the number of grams of water and the number of grams of carbs for a random selection of raw food. Okay, so let's put that in there.
Okay. Got your data in there. Okay, so let's do um, a stat, calculate, and number eight. Because eight has linear regression, eight plus bx. So let's hit eight. And if you press eight, you actually don't have to hit enter. So then you have your X list, your Y list. You leave this vacant. And then you have this store regression equation and then calculate. And it looks like when we do that, it looks like R is equal to negative 0 So um, let's see what they have here. So they always tell you the y prime for x equals 71, but you only do that if, if it's significant. So we're going to try to see if it's if it's significant, if r is significant. So they have test the significance of the correlation significant uh, variable r is negative 0 0.360. At, here's the alpha level they give you. So you see, I just need to round that. If I round that to the nearest thousands, tens, hundreds, thousands, is that five or more? Yes, so add one. Nine and one is 10 and add one to that. So R is about negative 0 0.360. So that's where that's coming from. And then that's given, they have to decide what the alpha is. So it's usually, it's usually one of these two. It's usually 0 0.05 or 0 0.01, so they decide that using your table I. And the data was seven. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So data size is seven. You got, you got seven columns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you do, you do seven minus two, which is five degrees of freedom. So you're looking on your table at 0 0.05 degrees of freedom five, and let's see what you get. So, five and 0 0.05. So it looks like it's 0 .7, 0 0.754, 0 0.754. 0.754, and that's right here. See that right here? That's 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 right there. 0.754, and then you compare that to the absolute value of R. So the absolute value, is this um, absolute value of R, which is the absolute value of this 0 0.360, is just 0 0.360 because the absolute value of negative is that. And is this true or false? Is 0.3 like 36 cents? Is 36 cents greater than 75 cents? No, this is false. So since it's false, regression, um, regression, what does it say? It should not, oh, regression analysis. Regression analysis should not be done, should not be done. Yeah, so here's me looking up that on the table, five and 0.754, okay, that's, that's coming from this table I. Yeah, so then so then it shouldn't be done. If it shouldn't be done, then you just stop. No, don't even try to find the equal, even though the calculator is gonna give you um, an A and a B, right? We don't we don't use that at all. We don't, we just stop right there. And on this side, what's going on here? 
see they have a table a picture of the table see so they have this here see should not be done okay so they're saying that for a significant relationship a value of r greater than this or less than this is needed Okay, so they're getting that from Yeah, I just I use on the table I say absolute value r greater than. So on my handout, let me look at my handout. And this is this is where you're coming from your quiz to have this see is absolute value r greater than the table value. If you see this set up on your quiz template, you take your quiz template. So since the value of R is this is greater than that, the no hypothesis is not rejected. There is not a significant relationship between the grams of carbs and the grams of water. So it shouldn't be done. Okay. All right. So that's that. Now let's see what we can do. Those two from our from our where are those two columns? So I have this. These two. Yeah, we're gonna do these two columns, and then we'll be done with the regression. Then there'll be there'll be one video, one more video coming. Just to show you the full hypothesis testing. And some schools, what they do in their statistics classic, statistics classes, some schools, they use that as part of their final. They do the, they'll give them like eight problems where they, I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna do a rec one more video recording where I do hypothesis testing and I'm gonna just sh show you two examples. But, but some schools, what they do on their final is they just give them eight problems like that, where they just do full hypothesis testing. Um, and so I'm gonna just close up with those two examples. Our final at our college is a cumulative based, really based on chapter, like quiz two, starting with chapter two, not really so much quiz one, but mostly quiz two on, quiz two, test one, test two, test three quiz three, it's more cumulative on that. But some colleges, their final is based on the hypothesis testing. So I'll do a video, last video, where I'll show you just two problems, the full blown hypothesis testing, so you can see that in case you have to take another stats class. So those are the last three handouts that I gave, that I had you um, record. The last three handouts that I had you record was this one, which is very important for the full-blown hypothesis testing. And then I have two examples of that, where you, you're doing uh, part one, part two, part three, part four, part five. See, and see, we're talking about the claim, see? The claim, you keep an eye on your claim. And so I have two examples of that. I'll do a separate video for that. And then, um, so here, if you're not getting those values that we're getting on the calculator, then you probably need to redo this, probably need to redo that. But hopefully you're getting the values. I know in my remote classes, nobody had issues. They seem to be getting that. And then these are the two problems I pulled out of your ebook, 27 and 23. One of them, one of them is to show you that uh, since R is not significant, no regression, multiple regression should be done. And then the other one is supposed to show you, well, yeah, it's, it is significant and you should do regression. So then they give you the, they create the regression equation line and then they actually do the prediction. They actually do the prediction because it's significant and you can do the regression and then they show you what you get. So I'll do these two, one of each. And, um, what I did on the alpha level, let's see what I did. 
on this one, because see the book doesn't have on when the on the computer it's good. On the computer it tells you what the alpha level is for the pollen, but right here it doesn't. So what I did to show you an example of each table is um let's see. On uh, number 27, that one I assigned alpha to be 0 0.01. And on number 23, I let alpha equal 0 0.05 on that one. Okay. So I could show you that on the table. All right. So then let's see. So, uh, oh, and then the printout that I gave you, um, I also included this. I think we were looking at this earlier on the other sheet. Um, and yeah, I think it's the same sheet that I was showing earlier. And some of the answers I think are there. Yes, yeah, so I think we saw this earlier. And some of the answers are there if you want to read that for understanding. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, put the values in, in the calculus. Let's do 27 first. So go to stat, edit, and go up and clear your data. And then go ahead and put these numbers in there, 15, 10, 8, 20, 18, 6, 85, 90, 82, 80, 84, 92. Okay, and then do um, stat, calculate, and number eight. And that's what I have here that calculate number eight enter oh actually you don't actually have to hit enter do you because let me take off enter after you hit eight i think it just pops up so i put that x data in l1 y data in l2 you just go down to calculate and there's my r you want to use r and not r squared so then that's that's what this sheet is for and then you'll see this on your final in your template when i mean on your template template for your quiz on your template for your quiz you'll see this kind of set up on your template for your quiz to show your work so r is actually negative 0 0.673055708 and i'm going to round i think i rounded that to the nearest thousands yeah and i don't like you know the book doesn't tell me what to round off to um it doesn't but i went ahead and rounded out to the thousands tens hundreds thousands and then look at the number to the right is that five or more no so r is about negative 0 0.673 and then the alpha i said i was going to assign it to be 0 0.01 so i just assigned that the teacher just assigned it because the book didn't and, but your, cal your, your system homework online is real good about assigning the alpha value. So absolute value of negative 0.673 is 0.673. So R is absolute value of that is 0.673. And you wanna know, is this true or false? That's bigger than the table value. So your number of data values, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you have six columns of data. So it's six because there's six columns of data. Six minus two is four. So on your table, on your degrees of freedom, you're looking up four. And on the alpha, I I just they didn't they didn't give you which alpha, so I just made it. I made two different ones, so you could use both of them. I made this in 0.01. So four and here we go. 
is 0 0.01. So it looks like it's 0 0.917, 0 0.917. And this, this is like 67 cents and 91 cents. Is 67 cents greater than 91 cents or like 92 cents? No, that's, that's false. So because it's false, that means the regression analysis should not be done because this is false. Because it says the variables do not have a significant relationship since H sub zero the null hypothesis is not rejected. And it, you, why would you not reject it? Because the absolute value R greater than the table is false in quality. Okay, so then then you would just you would just stop. No need to continue. So no need to do not put an equation and do not do a prediction, even though, even though they said, you know, when X is 12, you're not going to do that. Okay. So you just stop there. Okay. Now on the computer, I think when you take your quiz, I think if you make a mistake, like let's say you thought Let's say you thought that it should not be done, and let's say you are supposed to do it. The computer will give you uh, an attempt to give you some partial credit. It will take off points because this part was wrong, but but because let's say regression could have been done, then it'll give you the opportunity. Okay, well it should have been done, so we'll, let's see if we can give you some points. Let's see if you can write out the equation, and can you substitute and plug it in. And if you can do that, then it'll give you some partial credit. Um, I believe that's how it's kind of set up on the quiz. Okay. All right. So now the other problem. So this was number 27 from the ebook. And that was section 10.2, which is re call regression. So that's what that's where this is coming from. And this was just assigned by the instructor um, since not provided in the ebook. Main text. That's why I had to assign it. Okay. All right. Now, the other problem that we're going to do is number 23. Okay, so this is number 23 in your ebook. And here, assign by your instructor. So since I let the alpha be 0.01 on this problem, then I'm going to let the alpha be 0.05 in the other problem because the because the book didn't do it for me and this is 23 and this is still section 10.2 which is regression okay and the problem says 23 literary rates for the same countries used in exercise 22 the literacy rates and these are percents um, and you can see how, see Y prime is percentage, see that? Um, and they look how they round that to the tenths place. And look how they round these to the thousands place. Okay, but see, it doesn't say that here. Your, your connect math, like your online system is real good about telling you what to round these off to. These are in percents for both men and women. Okay, and I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let alpha be 0.05. So let's put L1 and L2 data in our calculator and look at your data columns one, two, three, four, five, six. So this one also happens to have six. When we did the first problem, when we did the one that was from, this is from a Connect Math uh, screenshot, this one had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This one had a data size of seven. There was seven columns of data and these these just happen to have they just happen to be tied they both happen to be six so i didn't realize that probably should have picked something different i just didn't realize that 
Okay, but this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have um, six data columns. So your end is like six. Okay, your end is six. Okay, so let's put the data in the calculator and then this will be the last, then I'll stop the video. This will be the last one we do here. And then I, later I'll do a, that other video for those other two problems just to show you the full hypothesis testing. Okay, so, but, but, but we really got to stop with regression and conjecture. So I, we didn't put any of the full hypothesis testing in the final, but in case you're curious what some of the other colleges are doing, like their final is just doing a whole bunch of hypothesis test problems, like eight or 10 of them for their final, just in case you're curious what that would look like. And in case you have to take another stats class, it's to help you with that. Or if you take a stats class at, an, at the university level. Um, so sometimes if you earn a D for the course at the community college level, if you retake it again at the community college level, I think it just um, replaces your grade. I don't think they take the average and I think they replace it. But if you don't, if you earn a D and you don't retake it again at the community college and the Alma colleges, then when you transfer to the university, usually they catch that and that gives them an opportunity for you to take their statistics at their university level, which would be more expensive. Um, and it, it might it might be um, well definitely would probably be more expensive, um, and then just just in case they do a little bit more, um, sometimes they move faster, um, um, but there's always a small slight variation, right? Um, so, but we did we have done the hypothesis testing in the sense of our quiz two we did that early on with the two tell, and then the last video I'm going to show you will have some examples of showing the full blown when we do it by hand. Those I'll show you doing it by hand, not on the calculator, okay? Okay, so let's see, let's go and edit, clear. Okay, so L1 is 43.1, 92.6, 65.7, 27.9, 61.5, Okay, then you have 12.6, Eighty-six point four, forty-five point nine, fifteen point four, thirty-six point three, six point one. Okay, so you um, you input your data. Make sure that they're, they're equally yoked, right? Because otherwise, it won't calculate the value there. Okay, and then you're gonna press stat, calculate, and number eight. Stat, calculate, and number eight. And then just enter all the way down. And then there's your R. So then I have, I'm gonna write that over here. R is 0 0.9082460083. And I'm gonna also round that to nearest thousands. 10s, hundreds, thousands. And then look at the number to the right. Is that five or more? No. So 0 0.908, put approximately equals to there. And so the absolute value of that is just 0 0.908.
and then 0 0.908 is that greater than your table value and your table value let's look that up so um, your data we said there was still six minus two which is four so you're going to look up four how did i write that over here let's see I get degrees of freedom up here. And then alpha was 0 0.05 is how I had that. Okay, so when I look that up, 4 and 0 0.05. See that 0.811. And this is like 91 cents or 90 cents, 91 cents and 81 cents. Is about 91 cents greater than 81 cents? Yes, that's true. So because it's true, that means we, uh, a regression analysis should be done. Okay. Now I didn't, I didn't do a scatter pot like to save time. Ideally they would like you to do a scatter pot first and, and they should show you like like this one would have shown you to have a, probably that it looked like it had a relationship like probably a positive or negative relationship it probably would have it looked like it was positive this one probably would have shown you like it had a positive relationship so they like you to do that first study that first and then um, then you quench that with your um, your table and then this is also real close to one see point nine. Uh, whereas the other one, what was the other one? One of them was 0.3, right? That was really, really low. And see, you're kind of iffy on the 0.67, like kind of iffy. So that's why you got to do this. And it depends. The very first one we did was really close to zero because the other one we did was R, wasn't it zero low? Point, wasn't it? was negative so yeah so let's take that as well. still r was negative r was negative 0.36 which is close to like negative 0.4 so probably when you would do a scatter plot on this one it probably wouldn't look like you had a negative it wouldn't have to go you would have a negative like a negative relationship but probably wouldn't look like you had a relationship for that and then you clench it with the table the table said no you don't okay so this one says, yes, you should do regression. So that way you're going to continue then. Then you continue. Should be done because the variables have a significant relationship since the null hypothesis is rejected. And why would it be rejected? Since the absolute value of R is greater than the table I value. And it's true, the true inequality. So then you want to determine the regression line. The regression line. So you want to write this out so your a if it turned off you can write that a was a negative 33.261084188 and b was 1.36671578 and i'm going to round these to the nearest thousands Again, the computer, your online computer would tell you what to round to. Tens, hundreds, thousands. Tens, hundreds, thousands. So you look at the number to the right. Is that five or more? No. Is that five or more? Yes. So this one is negative 33.261. This one is 1.367. Okay. So then when you plug those in to your equation here, y prime is equal to a. So a is going to be this value, negative 33.261 um, plus b, which is 1.367 times x. And that's, this is your regression equation.
equation. Okay, now remember we're going to let x equal 80 and we're going to substitute. Okay, so remember all the time the problems will provide you with that. Let's see where that's at. Go back to that. Where is that where it has the equations in there? Yeah, so you see, they always tell you, you see, x is 12, x is 80, but you only use that and, and substitute if, if the, you have the regression equation, and that's, and, and that's if, if it's significant. So then um, that's where I got the 80 from, got the 80 from that statement. That's why I'm using it. So when I plug that in, y prime equals negative 33.261 plus 1.367 times 80. And when I plug all that in, clear this. Negative 33.261 plus 1.367 parenthesis 80 close parenthesis equals and it looks like I get 76.099 and then I'm going to round this off to the tenths and this is a percentage and I, I only know to round to the tens only because see this is the correct answer see how they round goes to the thousands and this they probably round it to the tens probably because these this was percentages they said and these see in percents and these were in the tens that's probably why they did that but your system's pretty good about telling you what to round to. I have to, in the ebook, they're not very good. I always have to work backwards and look at what they did, kind of how they, what they round it to, because they don't tell me otherwise. And so y prime is about tens place right here. Look at the number to the right. Is that five or more? Yes. So add one to that. So 76.1%. Okay. All right, okay. So those conclude my notes on the regression. And so that way you can go ahead and finish your homework and then, uh, and then take your um, quiz three. And then uh, when you take your final, there should be one problem on your final related to this. I don't think the one on the final is so in depth because I don't think, and I know because I know it's time constraints on a final, you only have like 110 minutes to take those 25 problems. So I think that, um, I don't think they would have you do a prediction. Um, I think they just want you to compute a regression equation. So you would have to know how to type in the data and then the commands and then put out an R so the, the only bad thing is like, I think that they didn't have you a table I in there, like um, give you an alpha level. So you're just assuming that you're doing, assuming you are doing regression on that, um, like that the assumptions have been made and then they want you to compute the regression equation. So uh, you, you'll have a better idea when you see the, t the final exam review, the final exam review is similar to what's on the test. And so but I think it's not as in depth as, as this detail here. Okay, and your connect math is though, connect math is and it uses the table and the connect math quiz does. Okay, but I think on the final, they were a little loose on that because I don't think they went into the detail. They don't, well, I think if they don't give you an alpha level, you usually assume uh, I read somewhere that I read somewhere that if they don't give you an alpha level, you usually assume. Um, yeah, I knew I read it somewhere. Um, use alpha 0.05 unless the other alpha is specified. So usually, usually if the alpha is not specified then usually the rule of thumb is to use the 0.05. And let me see which one that one is. That one's the first one here on the table here. 
I don't know, they're all like this where they put the 0.05 first and the point, but usually if if it's not given, they usually assume to use the 0.05. But your I saw your problems in the Connect Math system. Mm, they do give you the alpha levels. The other thing I can say about the quiz I looked at is on the confidence intervals. Um, the one where you have to type in the data is more time consuming and they know it's a timed quiz. So I think on the confidence intervals on the quiz, the, the two that you have, I think they just, they limit it to the stats part. I think they didn't put the data in. I think they limit it to the stats if I remember correctly on that. Um, so there's just some feedback about that detail. Okay. Okay. So, so good luck on your, on your homework and then finishing your quiz and studying for your final. Remember your final exam, your instructor has the detailed solutions of the study guide. And uh, that's a really good study guide. Um, every semester, our department chair says, do we need to upgrade and update the final exam review? And as a team, teachers always comment, no, that's a good review. And then the different teachers who get assigned to update and change the final, um, uh, they get different of a, one of us get assigned to update the finals, but they always say, no, it's, that's a good review. When we update the final, we base it off of the review guide. And so there's not a need to update it. So that's a really good study guide. And uh, Mr. Trotman uh, volunteered one Thanksgiving holiday to help his online class. He did a, a review of the study guide. And, um, and so he's shared that with the instructors and it's on his YouTube account. So we use that all, usually the staff teachers pass that along to our students. So it's him working that out. But then what I did as a teacher, I have my detailed solutions in that final exam module that you can look at. So you're gonna to wanna to print the blank copy of the final exam study guide and then work, work that when you look at his video and when you see your print your teacher's notes out. And then you wanna, that counts as five points for your final, you can use that while you're taking the time final. Um, and it does count for five points on the final exam score, okay? And, but you do need to study for the final. You do need, you wanna spend, it may be too much to do the day before, unless that's the only thing you have to do that day um, before the final, but you might wanna um, break it out in chunks, like um, a couple of days in chunks, like Sunday and Monday, if you're taking the final Tuesday, um, for example, you want to break it out in chunks um, because I think it's it's definitely too much to do on the day of the final, I think. But if you space it out in two days, that would be good um, because it is 20% of the final course grade. It's a big chunk of your grade and you don't want to blow, blow it off. I've had students have blown it off. They're either working or um, and they just don't study and then they do bad on the final and it really brings their grade down. So you do have to study for it. It's 20% of the grade and it is cumulative, but the study guide will help you if you go through those problems and you refresh your memory on that and you can use your study guide, then you'll do okay on the final when you take the multiple choice final and which is timed and in Canvas and uses the respondus monitor and again, I'll put the password similarly in Connect Math. Um, and the prereq would be like um, to, to do quiz three, have a grade for quiz three. Um, and then also if you're in the co-rec to make sure that you've got the co-rec grade in there. Uh, once that test is graded and recorded in the system, that would be the, the requirement for that then to take the final, okay? All right, so I'll be sending you an email to keep keep y'all um, updated with that, whether you're in the standalone course or the course with the co-rec then. But good luck with your studying, okay? Study well. Good luck on your quiz three and your homework. Goodbye.